The quad paper in CAT 2007 was a difficult one. In this video, we'll revise the entire quad paper in a very rapid fire manner. Let's start with geometry. In this question, there are two circles which intersect each other and we have been asked to comment on this particular angle. It has been given that the two circles have the same radius. We know that when the radius cross the center of the other circle, then this total angle becomes 120 degree and this angle becomes 60 degree. We know this because you might have done a similar question before. If you don't know, then you'll have to calculate this. So that's the maximum. The minimum comes when the circles just touch each other, in which case this angle reduces to almost 0 degree. So the range would have been between 0 and 60 degree. Next question. In this question, a spherical tank is provided and its diameter, external diameter is at 10 meters. Uh, what we have been asked to comment on is whether that tank can contain 400 kiloliters of water. We have been given two statements and we have to answer whether any one statement independently or both combined can answer that question. So the first statement, the inner diameter of the tank is at least 8 meters, actually answers this question because 4 by 3 pi 8 cube, which will be the minimum the volume of that tank is still greater than 400 kiloliters and so it should be sufficient. The second question, the second statement also surprisingly answers the question because here you have been given the total mass and you have been given the density of the substance. So based on which you can calculate the mass of the tank and the internal diameter and answer the question. However, there was not an option for this scenario and it might be that the question had a mistake. A square has to be drawn with O on one side of the vertex. However, that is not possible and two reasons are given. We have to examine both of them. The first reason says length of OM is twice that of OL. Let's look at it. O is a point on the other vertex and OM and OL are these lengths. OM by OL will be minimum when O is exactly in center, in which case OM will be equal to OL and the ratio will be 1 is to 1. However, when O is close to one particular vertex, then this ratio is maximum, which is uh, one length becomes x root 2, the other length almost becomes x and the ratio becomes root 2. So the ratio can never be twice and hence this statement can be used to answer the question why he wasn't able to draw the square. A confused bank teller by mistake transposed the rupees and paise that he was supposed to give. The customer, after getting the wrong amount, first bought a 50 paise toffee and then realized that she had three times the amount that she was supposed to have. So basically, if she was supposed to get A rupees and B paise, she got B rupees and A paise and after she spent 50 paise, she realized that that amount was three times what she was supposed to get. The way to solve this question is by looking at the options. For example, if you're looking at this option, we know that if we had 22 rupees, then it has to become thrice when the paise becomes rupees. So the paise will be somewhere between 66, 67, 68 and 69. And we have to check for all these four options. And the other thing that we can check is that once it's transposed, we'll get 22 passe and when you subtract 50 from 22 it still 2 will remain as the final unit digit so you can see which number when multiplied by 3 will give 2 as the final unit digit and that would give the answer in this number system question we have been given 1 by m plus 4 by n equal to 1 by 12 we have also been given that n is an odd integer less than 60 and we have been asked to find the positive integer solutions for m and n what we also know when first by looking at the question is that n should be greater than 48 because otherwise 4 by n will be less greater than 1 by 12 and since 1 by m cannot be negative this is not possible. So n will be between 48 and 60 and will have odd integer value. So these are the values which n can take. For all these values we need to check whether m is an integer or not and post that you will get the answer. In this question s is a series which starts with 2 and ends with an odd number. Uh, and then we have defined x as the average of the odd integers and y as the average of the even integers in s. And then we need to find x minus y. The question is relatively simple. Uh, y will be the average of 2, 4 till 2n. And using the formula of arithmetic progression, you can calculate and get n plus 1. Same thing you can do for x and you will get n plus 2 as the uh, number. And so x minus y will be equal to 1. Next question. Here, a four digit number is given for which the first two digits are equal and the last two digits are also equal. We need to find how many such numbers are perfect squares. So you can write the number as xxyy, which will be equal to xoy into 11. Based on this, you can uh, you know that if this number has to be a perfect square, xoy will need to be divisible by 11 and y being the last digit can only be 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 or 9. For the number to be divisible by 11, x plus y will need to be 11. And you can calculate for all cases and see that the only number that comes out is 7744. Next question. In this question, there are n teams and each of the team has k players. Each team shares 
one common player with the team number adjacent to it. For example, T1 shares one player with T2, T2 with T3 and so on and Tn with T1 as well. So we have to find the total number of players in this tournament. The way we can do it is each team has k minus 2 unique players. So the total number of players becomes n into k minus 2. And then each team has two overlapping players. So total number of overlapping players becomes n into 2. You divide that by 2 because you don't want to double count. And then add to get the answer which is n into k minus 1. This will be an easy question in this paper. That concludes the number system section. Let's move on to algebra. On nth day of 2007, the price of Darjeeling tea is 100 plus 0.1n if n is less than 100 and 110 when n is greater than 100, while the price of Uti tea is 89 plus 0.15n. We need to find on which day will the price of both the teas be equal. So first we equate the first definition. When you equate it, what you will get is that n becomes greater than 100 and we know that at n equal to 100 the definition changes. So then you will equate the second definition and on equating the second definition you will get n is equal to 140 and then from using that you can calculate that that day would be 20th May. Next question. In this question we have a quadratic function and we have been given some data around it. What we have been given is that the value of the function at x equal to 0 is 1. So you can substitute x equal to 0 and get c is equal to 1. We have been also been given that the maximum that the function achieves is 3 when x is equal to 1. So you differentiate it and substitute x equal to 1 and that value should be 0. So that way we get the second equation. And when we substitute 1, the value should be 3. So that's how we get the third equation. Solving these three, you'll get a, b and c and you'll get fx. And then you are asked the value of f10. So you can substitute and get the value of f10. In this question, Shamnam has three options to invest. Option A, she has a guaranteed return of 0.10% whatever happens in the market. Option B, she gains 5% when the market goes up and minus 3% when the market goes down. And option C, she loses 2.5% when the market goes up and gains 2% when the market goes down. So what we have been asked to find is the maximum guaranteed return and what should be the portfolio distribution for it. To generate a return greater than 0.1%, we need to divide your, our portfolio among these two options. So we'll put x in B and 1 minus x in C. Using that, what you get is 7.5x uh, minus 2.5 will be the return when the market goes up and 2 minus 5x will be the return when uh, the market goes down. Your guaranteed return would be this function and you will need to get the maximum of this function to get the maximum guaranteed return. And that happens when you equate these two terms. So equating these two terms, you can get x and then you can calculate 7.5x minus 2.5 to get the maximum return and answer both these questions. In this question, a product is sold at a price of rupees 30 and the cost price of producing x units is 240 plus bx plus cx square. Uh, what we have been also been told that the cost increases from 20 to 40 units by 66% and from 40 to 60 units by 50%. And then we need to find out how many does he need to produce to maximize his profit. So just by looking at these 66% and 50%, we can form these equations by substituting the right values in the expression 240 plus bx plus cx square. Uh, you can solve these two equations to get b and c. And then your profit is, uh, if x is the number of produced, 30x minus the cost of production. And you can maximize these express this expression by differentiating. And you will get the maximum value, which is at x is equal to 100 and profit equal to 760. In this question, you have been given f1 is equal to 3600 and f1 plus f2 plus fn is equal to n square fn. So using that, you have to calculate f9. The way to do it is you can write fn as sum of f1 to fn minus 1 divided by n square minus 1. Using that, you can calculate f2 and then you can calculate f3 for f4 using f1 and f2 and so on. Uh, the calculation is painful and in the exam, it would be recommended that you do it only when there is enough time left at the end. We'll skip this question as it takes a lot of time to explain. Uh, I couldn't find a proper method to do this question. The best way was to substitute n equal to 4 and see which option suffices. You can try it yourself. In this question, we have to find the maximum possible value of x square plus y square plus z square. And two statements are given and we have to comment on whether each statement suffices. So when x plus y plus z, the sum is constant, uh, then you might know the result already that uh, the sum of square is maximum when x, y is equal to y, z equal to z, x or x is equal to y equal to z. So just by using a, we can answer the question. Let's look at probability and PNC questions. S is a set of all pairs i and j formed by the numbers between 1 to n. Two members of S are called friends if they have one element in common, while they are called enemies if they have no elements in common. The first question is, for a general n, how many enemies will each member of S has? 
for a member of f there are n minus 2 members which it does not have and the number of combinations will be n minus 2 c2 and that comes to n square minus 5 n plus 6 by 2. The second question is if two members of s are friends that is they have one element in common how many other members of s will be common friends so if the two elements are like a b and a c one other common friend will be b comma c and the other common friend will be a and any of the other n minus 3 elements so the total number of friends becomes n minus 3 plus 1 which is equal to n minus 2. We have three different denominations of a currency, 1 unit, 10 unit and 50 unit and we have been asked in how many ways can we pay a bill of 107. So we will get the answer by first counting 50 mesos, the biggest unit. So if we have 0 of that, then we can use the 10s in from 1 to 10, so that makes it 10. If we have 1 of 50 meso, then we can use 5 ways the 10 meso coin. And if we have two of them, then we can use it only once. So the total number comes 10 plus 5 plus 1 equal to 16. A and B are 3000 kilometers apart and the wind blows from B to A at 50 km per hour. A flight takes off from B at 8 a.m. and reaches A at 3 p.m. And then it takes off from A at 4 p.m. and reaches B at 8 p.m. Uh, there is also a time zone difference between A and B. So we have been asked to calculate the time difference and the plane speed. If we assume X is the time difference, then it takes 7 minus x hours to go and it takes 4 plus x hours to come back. So the total distance traveled, total time the flight uh, operates is around 11 hours. Using that, you can calculate the average velocity of the flight as 6000 kilometers, which it travels, divided by 11, the distance time it spends in the air, which can be equated with 2 v1 v2 by v1 plus v2, which is the formula for average speed. And you can write v2 as v1 plus 100 because there is a 50 kilometer wind blowing. So using that you can calculate v1 as 500 and x as 1 hour. This was a question on averages. In this question, there is a class of 100 students who have the average weight is 45 kgs. They are divided into two parts. Uh, one section has a weight of w1, the other has w2. w2 is greater than w1. Then one student, Deepak, who is the heaviest in w2, is moved to w1. And Poonam, who is the lightest in w1, is moved to w2. And then for both the sections, the average weights change, as in the average weight for this section becomes W2 and the other one becomes W1. We are asked the weight of Poonam and we have been given two sentences. The first sentence says that the difference between W2 and W1 was 1. Using this sentence, you can calculate the exact values for W1 and W2, but you would not be able to calculate the weight of the person who moved because two people move. If it had been only one person moving, then you could have calculated. So we need something more. And the second statement gives that something more. When we move Deepak from section 2 to 1, it makes the average weight of the two sections equal. So using this statement, you can calculate the weight of Deepak. And then using the first one, you will know how much Poonam weight. So we'll need both of these to solve this question. So we'll mark three as the answer. This is the final question of the paper and it's an easy one. 10 years ago, the average age of a family of eight was 231. Three years from then, a 60 year old person died and a new person was born. So you can calculate the new total as 231 plus three into eight minus 60 plus zero. Three years after that, again, the same thing happened. So you again add three into eight minus 60 for the person dying and plus zero for the new person. And then four years ahead of that is the current date. So we add four into it. And so that gives us the total age of the eight people in the family. We have been asked to calculate the average age. So we'll just divide by eight and get the final answer. This brings us to the end of the CAT 2007 quant paper. Please comment and let us know your views on the video. Thank you.